Now that we understand how our composites work, we can see how it can pertain to the situation we have with a character and a background. So we're going to close this up. And let's switch back to this display, which is the main display, by going to our toolbar and clicking display in the drop down list. So we have our character and we have our bushes. Inside of our group, all of our nodes are set to a pass through mode, which is de determined by that trapezoid. The idea is that we want to maintain Z depth for all of the limbs in case some are behind and some are in front. And as soon as you make them bitmap comp, it flattens them to a single depth. However, suppose we want to make this character semi-transparent. I'm going to click and remove it from the treatment. So it's just the character. And I will add a transparency module to it by alt click and dragging. Now when you do this to a character that's in pass through, it doesn't do the 50% to the full character, it does it to each individual module. So if we were to actually preview this rendered, we'd see 50% of every single piece. That's not exactly what we're looking for. So a beauty of having the composite bar control this is we can add a bitmap comp. Again, I just hit Control H on my keyboard or Command H on a Mac. And what this does is it flattens everything to a single image instead of keeping every single individual drawing available. So I'm going to wire this down to a composite and then wire this through the transparency. What effectively happens now that it's re-rendered is we get a single image getting that 50% transparency as opposed to individual pieces. Now what I want to do is I want to space this out and put my character behind these bushes. So again, I'm going to plug it back in, delete these, and get back into my OpenGL view by clicking the button. If I go inside of my group, I can see that the background is a bitmap comp, which means that any Z depth I apply here will be respected by a camera, but everything will show up in a single Z space. So visually, we'll see how that works. I'm going to push some of these layers back in depth to create a multi-plane move. Now I can use these move tools, but as soon as I start moving things back, it starts to shrink at the same time to showcase that it's going further back into depth. I'm going to undo that, and I'm actually going to use this tool instead called the Maintain Size tool. What this tool does is it allows you to push things back and forth in depth without changing the way it looks in your camera. It scales automatically to compensate. So if I push that sky back, I can see that my composition remains the same, which is what I want. So I'm going to do this to all the layers a little bit, and I'm moving this back. That's the sun. Move back the clouds. And I'm going to move back these mountains, but not quite as far as the sky since they are a little further in. Same thing with the back bushes. Move this tree as well as this one. And one more. Now when I get over here to the ground, I notice that I also have these flat bushes and another bush behind our character that we can't see. Let's turn off the character so we can focus on that. So there's our bush, there's our bushes, and there's our flat ground. If I move these in independent space and I move a camera through it, I will actually see these layers sliding from one another, which is not what we want to do. Anytime you see a ground plane and overlays that should be on the same plane, you want to make sure they're on the same Z space. To make this easy on myself, I'm going to create a new peg with Control P. I could also have done Command P on a Mac or drag it from the node library. And then I'm going to connect this from the main peg down to the other pegs. This way I can control all three layers with one single peg. And so now when I move them, they get moved as one piece. Now I'm going to undo this since I don't necessarily need to move the ground plane from the zero space. Zero is where I want most of my action to be, so I'll keep that uh, as it is. But I want to move these two bushes forward, so I'll do that now like so. Now that we have all our layers spread out in Z space, I'm going to go back up to the top view and I'm going to add a camera. 
I can do so with dragging camera in and adding a peg. To showcase how this works, I can now click this transform tool and physically push my camera in. And you can see that the background has now multi-plane options to go through space due to the Z space. Let's reintroduce our character and enable them. Somehow we can't see the character. If I disable my BG, you can see that the character is behind it. What's essentially happening here is that our composite that gathers all of these layers is a bitmap, which means it flattens the character or sorry, the background down to a single layer with one single Z space deciding where it's going to display. The Z space is still maintained as you could see when I was moving the camera but it's displaying in front of the character because it's getting its Z depth information from the leftmost port. And if we look down here, this highlighted port connects to the front bush, which is in front of our character since our character is at zero. So what we want to do is simply change this composite from a bitmap to a pass through. And now all of the Z space char characteristics are passed through down to the main composite and our character can then be placed properly behind the bushes. And that explains the Z space.